Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Ready to Love season mm, episode six. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. You think I know what season they're on by now? Season nine? Let's go with season nine. So this week is women's choice and they have to talk about their doubts on their dates this week. The first date is between Aries and Phil who have not seen each other in person since the hoedown. These are beautiful. I counted them. It's at least 12 of them. Oh my gosh. I wanna make sure that whoever I'm with, you know, is gonna accept my kids and be a partner in this with me. Right. I'm open to having more kids, but that don't mean I gotta have them from scratch. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? You have two. If we're together and we get married and have this great relationship and all that, now I got three. I definitely can see Philip in my future, but I'm also establishing this strong connection with Chris. Am I the only one who was taken off guard by the kiss? This is the second kiss where I'm just like, it, this was a lot more natural at least than last week with, with uh, Marvin and, um, Unique. I should know her name. It starts with the same two letters as mine. But uh, I still was wondering how they just went straight in the, for the kiss like that. But it's okay. It looked a little bit more natural. I did not know Aries was divorced twice. Phil is also divorced. And so they're both saying they're okay with having a blended family, but they're not quite sure about having kids like from babies. So yeah, I think that this situation does work for them. I wouldn't have put them together, but now that they are together, I'm not against it. Christopher and Sierra are on their first date. And one of Sierra's doubts is falling for somebody's representative. Now, Christopher, I was all for you until today. You'll meet someone and then they're like, they're great. It's like the honeymoon stage and then they become this other person. Yeah. Like that raises doubt for me. You Do you know, have any insecurities? No, I don't. And that's why I you say, don't? I never doubt myself. Pay attention to detail. Oh, to what, like, wow. to what a person like. Okay, so it's Birkin like I, bags like, are really my thing. <laughs> on a $50,000 purse? I mean, I just met you. I don't even know your last name, Sierra. Go you find really? somebody else can get the no, Birkin. No, 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 I'm going to buy the Birkin. Birkin. Will you look but at me different? Because I'm in a rough patch and couldn't get the Birkin. This man said he has no insecurities. None. Zero. I think some people misunderstand when somebody asks if you have insecurities and think that they're being called out for being an insecure person. And that's just not true. You know what I mean? So when he's getting a little bit agitated about her finances, when she brings up, you know, I'd like a Birkin, and even if you can't buy it, I'm gonna buy it for myself. He starts to show this insecurity about finances. I thought you didn't have any insecurities, sir. All she said was, I like Birkins, and no, I'm not gonna hop off to the next man. If you can't get me a Birkin, I'll just get it myself. For some reason, that triggered him, so it is giving insecurity. He is showing himself to be not mm. so sierra had said she has a fear of falling for a representative and it looks like this is what christopher is also doing like christopher is trying to present as his best self but he caught um he got caught slipping today so yeah christopher damn i felt like he presented very well when he first came in but it's very clear through this episode that the women are just not feeling him the next date is with chris not christopher and jessica I understand this is a television show, okay? So a lot of things are staged, I get it. But for this man to be mic'd up and in front of cameras talking about, oh, I never expected this. Come on now. How are you? Wow, this is so unexpected. Chris and I are both very busy, so I thought it'd be a great idea for me to grab some lunch and maybe just have a little intimate date at his work site. Since you're such a, a powerful woman, the way you talk to me has to be different than the way you talk to other people. I like direct communication, so I'm not gonna start talking like this because I want to get a man. Like, it, th that's that's not it. But do you truly feel that you've been reaching out to me? I will say in the beginning, no, because I did not have your phone number. <laughs> she is saying that he is inconsistent. 
And he blames it on the fact that he is busy a lot and sometimes it takes him a while to get back to a woman. I'm so sorry. I do hear that. And as grown adults, we do have lives outside of dating. But when you want to make an effort for somebody who you're genuinely interested in, you just make the effort. So if she's calling you out on being inconsistent and your response is, but you don't text me, guess who's not texting you anymore? Me. Because what? Like, I don't know. Like definitely on her side, she did admit she could have been doing more to also let him know that the pursuit is mutual. But if you wanted to talk to her, you would talk to her. You would find a way to talk to her. Another issue that they have is that Chris feels like Jessica is too powerful for him and he would like a little bit more softness from her. My personal perspective is that, yes, there are some people out in this world who are jaded. However, sometimes in relationships, depending on the energy that your partner brings, you can also be the yin to that yang, right? So in a relationship where she has somebody who can allow her to live in her softness, to rest, in her softness, I think that would have come naturally. But if we are being completely honest, this is not me being shady. I'm being so, so, so honest. I think the softness in this relationship has already been covered. So Jessica doesn't really have the room to be soft because the role is already filled. Katarina has been connecting with Marvin over the phone. However, she has concerns about his ability to be monogamous. Absolutely can, can function in a monogamous relationship because that's what I grew up witnessing, a family. And that's what I want. And everything else, you know, is just extra. And so right now I'm looking towards the future. Me being married with beautiful children, I'd be good to go, so. Do I believe Marvin 100%? Absolutely not. Honestly? I think we're a good match. Just everything that we have, there's something special, man. Since when was Katarina Marvin's strongest connection? When did that happen? I know they said they talk over the phone, but even when they're talking in this conversation, I don't see it. This is now the third or fourth woman who has said Marvin likes to say whatever the woman is in front of him would like to hear. And even when he does that, they don't believe him. They don't think that he's being genuine. So how now he went from that to this is my strongest connection, it cannot be. You're clearly holding up a facade that is not very believable because you stay getting called out on it. Marvin, Marvin was a waste of a casting. I'm so sorry. I think maybe on a different show like Temptation Island. He would have been great. You know, that sexually explorative guy, the one who is still looking for a relationship, but like a spicy one, a very out there freaky deaky kind. If you were gonna bring somebody like Marvin, bring other people who are on the same level because all these women seem to be wanting monogamy and just a regular degular type of relationship. Ain't nothing freaky, ain't nothing crazy. So Marvin was a waste of space. Kira is on a home date with Herbert. What was that TikTok dance thing that they did at the end? Why? Why? That was so weird to me. And I'm like five or six years her junior. And that was weird to me. But anyways, um, she says that she has concerns that Herbert is a little bit too nonchalant. You need to step your game up, baby. That's it. I hear that. I think definitely we talked about dating multiple people. Like two or three is like... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dating multiple people can be challenging, but I do think that it's manageable. It takes like three seconds on the toilet to send a text. Love when Herbert picks me up and the fact that he brought Jake a toy. I definitely feel like our connection has grown, but I still want to see him improve on this communication. Have you guys ever seen that, that TikTok? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen that TikTok that says, um, if you're going to be nonchalant, I'm going to be not your bitch. That's how I would feel with Herbert because there's a difference between being a chilled out person and then being disinterested. I don't think that Herbert really wants to be here. I think that Herbert, Herbert might be a low key Marvin if we're being honest. The way that he constantly makes sexual jokes with Sierra or the other women, um, he's done it with Janelle too. I'm just like, I don't know how serious he is about these women. And then now that they're complaining about the fact that he's not consistent, he doesn't really reach out. He doesn't keep up communication with them. He doesn't want to be here. Either he doesn't want to be here or he doesn't want to be with these specific women. I also have to say, Kira, Kira's pep to me feels like a facade. I think that 
We know with reality shows, although it is not scripted, there is a storyline, right? And I think that whatever archetype they casted Kira for, she's really leaning into that very strongly. I don't know if this is her completely. That's just my personal observation. Janelle is on a date with her, not Herbert, John. She's on a date with Quentin, but she believes that Herbert is husband material. Maybe she's seen something that I haven't. However, she's questioning if Quentin is ready for all that she is ready for. I've been waiting to get you by yourself, girl. I have been yourself. waiting. How do you feel about our age difference? I don't even think about it. We can address those things when we get there. But I think the timeline mm -hmm. in marriage and children, we gotta be in love tomorrow. My parents were young and my adoptive parents got me at like six months old. Are your adopted parents uh, black, white? Yes, they black. Hey, yeah, you never know. <laughs> My parents are white. I'm just asking. I'm gonna give you some reassurance. Just marriage and kids, mm -hmm. I don't think it takes a long time. And that's why I have done the work to be ready. Is trying to say don't worry about my age that's something that we will tackle down the line no I'm gonna worry about that right now because I want to see that the trajectory of the relationship is going to go in the same direction that I want it to go otherwise we are wasting our time I'm a woman of a particular age not me but Janelle is and so I need to know are you going to be ready for what I'm ready for he then offers her some reassurance saying that when it comes to marriage and kids and all that stuff, that is going to be a fast process for him. He's not going to elongate an engagement. He's not going to, you know, postpone kids for way, way down the line. That's something that he wants pretty soon. So, okay, fine. Um, I don't believe him, though, when he says that. I just really don't. Because he kind of gave that same spiel to Lee and we haven't even seen Lee since then. He does this whole, yes, marriage, I want it so bad and all this stuff, yeah, yeah, whatever. But then when push comes to shove, it looks like he's just not that serious. I think that his attraction to Janelle, ooh, am I going to say it? mama on his arm but and even Janelle she likes that whole like ooh younger man like I, but anything beyond that I just I I don't see it I thought that things between Morier and Kia Ki, 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 mm, see that's not even her real name that's why I'm struggling to say it Morier and Kira have been put to rest because they are just incompatible however here they are on a date. Ooh. Trying to get dip. I'm trying to get dips <laughs> off it. The feedback on black culture from REA baffled me. So going into this date, of course I want to get to the bottom of this. Do you like desserts? I like, you know, cookies and sweet potato pie. Homemade or like store brought? Homemade. Homemade, yeah. okay. I have two older brothers, yeah, I have yeah. a dad. Like, if I don't like black culture, like, I don't feel like you really saw me for who I am. Yeah. I feel like you prejudged me. Yeah, yeah. So, Possibly, yeah. yeah. I try to talk about the black culture comment but I feel like we have a resolve the issue and it does make me question a little bit of his character. So some people in my comments last week were saying that Kira is in the right to ask Quentin if he dates white women because she wants to date a man who exclusively dates black women. I then would add to the argument to say that Morier was correct to ask this woman, can she relate with black culture because he wants a woman? who can fully immerse herself into black culture. Like, let's be real. We constantly say things like black people are not a monolith. Therefore, there are some black people who have an affinity to whiteness. I believe that Kira is one of them. And there are other black people who are just for the people, down for the people, always for the people, the people, the people, the people, okay? And I, I, I just don't think that Kira is on the level that Morier is on. And so I feel like he had the right to question that. Now, can she be offended by those questions? Absolutely. I don't think I I don't think I would judge her for that because how dare you question my blackness? However, you got to kind of see why he would question your blackness. And also the streets are saying that Kira isn't even Kira's real name. Apparently her name is Lanisha. So, you know, it doesn't really help. <laughs> when you're saying how dare you question my blackness but then you say things like first of all your name is Kira and also I'm the closest to a white girl in this group and oh I have white friends I can ask certain questions like it girl come on Lee has already decided that she does not like more of it so 
either this date with Marvin is to elongate her time because I'm not sure who else she's connecting with or it was forced by production. I love to explore different ways of thinking and he's just a different breed. So I'm wondering like what it's rooted in. I'm very even tempered. Like. I love to have a good time. I love to laugh and I'm, I'm silly. I like impersonating voices and movies. What's some your of favorite my friends. movie? Jurassic Park. Oh, you impersonate Jurassic Park? Yeah. You're an amazing person. Oh. You're, you're gorgeous, but you're humble. And that's huge for me. Thank you. That's sweet. That's what's I up. appreciate it. That's what's up. Bye. For sure. So where are you with me? How do you feel, if anything? Um, I think that you're a, a nice guy, but I'm not sure your lifestyle preferences are aligning with me. We received absolutely nothing from this date. We learned nothing new. We already knew that Marvin's lifestyle is not compatible with Lee's lifestyle. Outside of Quentin, I don't see who else Lee is connecting with. And so I think that production just had to plop her in with somebody and just kind of make fetch happen. Because even with Quentin, when, when have we seen them? Since that first, no, I think the second episode, we haven't seen them together. We've only heard him say, it feels like Lee is my girl. But even that, it, it's, it's just not making sense. So this date was a waste of time. And I think that Lee might be leaving the the show soon. At the ladies lounge, the, the women talk about uh, Christopher basically being the second red where he just is listing off his resume instead of getting to know the women genuinely. He has fallen to the bottom along with Morier who's giving friend vibes and Marvin whose lifestyle just does not fit with what the women are looking for. Now, Janelle, <laughs> Janelle cannot help but have a bone to pick with these women because now she's in a situation with Kira. He asked me, do I like black culture? You black, right? Last time I checked, I thought I was black too. I would say Marvin. Okay. Mar I was, I'd be messing up people's I, names. I, I, I so many men. It's Marie. She didn't forget Marie's name. She was upset because he called her out about how she really feels about black people. You have been kind of just snarky this whole time. I have not been snarky with you. you. Okay. You've been incorrect several times. You've made comments like that around levels of blackness. Like, I like black, but this is too black for me. I can feel y'all's negative energy because y'all definitely single me out on things. I will not be speaking to you because I do not like you because you okay. jump in and out right, of so character. Let's do this. I feel like both sides are correct. I think that Kira has been triggered by being called out on her blackness or lack thereof. And so she is finding a way to attack other people who may have attacked her. Attack might be a strong word, but for lack of a better term, we'll say attack for now. And then I also believe Kira when she says that Janelle and Jessica are like mean girls. Janelle, we've already seen it from the first episode. And Jessica, this episode, the way that she was talking about Kira, I can see little bits of that. Now, don't be saying they're mean girls too long because these women don't like that. Janelle specifically, Janelle will come for you. She, she literally will come for you. She will pull up to your house. So yeah, um, I think both, both sides are true. Ultimately, there are two men going home this week and the men are Marvin and um, Christopher. They couldn't align with you as far as like your sexual preferences. I think the issue is a lot of times it's easier to reject what's different than learn about. You're trying to sell yourself. That's what this, they say. That's what they said. It's not me telling myself, it's me telling the truth of who I am. If you ask a question, how do I, you supposed to get to know me? You are giving like homie Homeboy vibes. vibes. Like to be put in a friend zone is a little bit different to say, well, I don't think that this person is somebody I could see myself with. I don't know if you guys noticed, but these men cannot take criticism. At the actual dates themselves, they had a rebuttal for every single thing. Morier was like, well I'm, a, well, I'm a black man who's in black things and I need a woman who's comfortable in the black sphere. Okay, all right. Christopher was saying, how am I supposed to get to know the women if, they don't, if I don't tell them about myself so they could get to know me? I forget what the other man was saying to Marvin. Oh, Marvin was basically saying, you don't get the time to know me, so you're only going off of assumptions based on what I do for a living. So... Not that it's, 
not that you can't plead your case, but if we as the women are saying, here is where we think you can improve on this, a rebuttal, okay, not a rebuttal, but being defensive about that isn't really gonna help your case, if that makes sense, you know? So, yeah. The other guys took it better. Marier and Marvin took it better, but Christopher left still having a chip on his shoulder. He said he will take the criticism on board, but I think he's a little bit jaded by this process. I'm kind of sad. I, I had high hopes for him. I thought that he would have been a great <laughs> addition to the show, but just like Red, he couldn't look past the accolades and stuff like that in order to connect with the women. Next week is a Meet the Exes episode. That is always interesting. We see who's actually healed from their past and who still has some things to work on. So stay tuned for that. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.